Hello and welcome to Jazz at Home, celebrating UNESCO International Jazz Day 2020, the Singapore edition. I'm Jeremy Montero and I serve as the Executive and Music Director of Jazz Association Singapore, or JAS. To share a fun fact, the acronym JAS, J-A-S-S, -S, is the or is original historical spelling of the word jazz. In November 2011, UNESCO officially designated April 30th as International Jazz Day to highlight jazz and its diplomatic role in uniting people all around the world. Since 2018, jazz has staged free concerts at the Singapore Botanic Gardens every April to celebrate this meaningful day with all in Singapore. This year, we are bringing the show online right here so we can all stay home stay safe and still celebrate together. We have a great show lined up for you, including a swinging jam session of Singapura, an exclusive performance by seven-time Grammy Award-winning trumpeter Randy Brecker, performances by our local musician associates in their homes, a jazz compositional uh, discussion, panel discussion with Chuck Karong, Aya Sikini, Wei Siang Tan and myself, and also our first ever online Jazz Music Scholarship Award presentation. Let's start the show with a word from our dear jazz patron, Professor Tomiko, followed by a performance by the Jazz Association Youth Orchestra, or Jazz Yo, of the Thelonious Monk Classic Straight No Chaser at celebrating IJD 2019 concert at the Singapore Botanic Gardens. Please enjoy. Music makes us happy. Music can unite people and transcend boundaries. Thank you for joining this virtual concert to celebrate International Jazz Day.
Oh, finish already. Oh, that was fantastic. Such so swing and jazz. It's so infectious. And I just couldn't help uh, bobbing along to the rousing performance uh, by Jazz Hill. We look forward to performing again at Singapore Botanic Gardens. A special call out to Singapore Botanic Gardens team who have always been so supportive. We all long for COVID-19 to be over, but meanwhile, we must stay resilient and keep the music going for ourselves as musicians and for all of you who love, who love this wonderful music. Please allow me to share this video message from NEA Jazz Master and UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador, Maestro Herbie Hancock. The world is celebrating International Jazz Day on April 30th under exceptional circumstances due to COVID-19. Alongside UNESCO, the organization that proclaimed International Jazz Day, and Director General Audrey Azale, I would like to invite everyone to join us and embrace the values and messages embodied by Jazz Day. Freedom of expression, peace, dialogue among people, human dignity. Keep these values alive as you play your music in your home or on your balcony Share your music through digital platforms, enjoy jazz recordings, or watch one of our past Jazz Day Global concerts. Jazz artists and the jazz community are resilient. There is hope and solidarity in jazz music, something we all need right now. This International Jazz Day is the occasion to tap into this spirit and unite around the beauty and power of jazz. Thank you, Maestro Herbie Hancock. You're truly a big inspiration to all of us jazz musicians. It's truly important to keep going and we are grateful to our partners for their support. Thank you very much. And now a solo by Sean Letts, lead tenor saxophonist for the Jazz Association Singapore Orchestra, Jasso, who has been praised by the legendary pianist Bill Evans for his great musicianship. Hi, I'm Sean Letts, uh, and practicing saxophone player, practicing more than usual with all this downtime we've been having. Uh, also, writing a lot of music is something I've always done, and uh, have a new thing to play for you today. I call it Doom to Swing. Hopefully a big band will be playing it soon. Hopefully the Jazz Association of Singapore Orchestra will be playing it soon. Uh, it's a, a band I'm lucky enough to be a member of from time to time. And um, uh, if that band will not be playing for you today, obviously they're, we're all socially distant at the moment, so I'll be the soloist and my band is coming from this computer. So use your imaginations, imagine it sounds like a band, imagine it sounds fantastic, and uh, I wish everybody the best.
Thanks so much, Sean. Sean Letts is a really wonderful musician. I really thank him for always keeping the saxophone section nice and tight. I noticed that looking now at the Facebook and YouTube, there are almost 1,100 of you look, watching us. Please do me a favor and share the post and or start your own watch parties now so that we can get many more people to come and enjoy the show, okay? It now gives me great pleasure to share a video greeting by Minister for Culture, Community and Youth, Ms. Grace Fu. Hello, good evening. I'm so happy to join you as Jazz Association Singapore, or Jazz, brings you an online celebration of UNESCO Jazz Day 2020. You know, one night when I was about to wrap up the night and sign off from all my social media and my email, and I noted someone playing live. It was an impromptu Facebook Live, and it was Jeremy Montero. And it was just some curiosity on my part, uh, but that curiosity in the end lasted 40 minutes of good jazz listening online. So I'm, I'm sure we're going to enjoy ourselves tonight and i really like to thank Jeremy and Jazz for bringing the arts community together, especially in very challenging times like these. You know, music and the arts really move and comfort us. As I mentioned, the 40 minutes that I spent just went past so quickly that, that I fully enjoyed myself. And it has a way of transporting us to a totally different world, you know, away from this physical constraint that we have. And, and really, it's up to your imagination and how jazz is going to bring you. So I'm very glad that jazz and everyone is also coming together and bring exciting digital content so that we Singaporeans can enjoy hashtag SG Culture Anywhere. So this particular online event is actually the first project supported by the NAC. This is under its digital presentation grant. And I hope that more groups will be able to tap this grant so that we can see more exciting work online. It is really good time for the arts community to show what we've got uh, digitally so that it can reach a new segment, a whole new world out there where people have nothing to do but to really search online. Think about it. It's a real opportunity for us. So I would also like to congratulate this year's Jazz Music Scholarship recipient, Mr. Ernest Tan. He's pursuing his honours degree in Jazz Performance at LaSalle College of the Arts. And the scholarship helps to nurture local jazz talent and raise the level of jazz excellence in Singapore. So I'd really like to offer my heartiest congratulations to Ernest. And I'm sure Singapore will hear a lot more of you later. So I hope everyone will enjoy tonight's performance and let us continue to support our local artists who create work that inspired us. Have a good evening. Thank you, Minister, for the kind words of encouragement and for all that you and the government do to promote the arts in Singapore and for announcing this year's Jazz Music Scholarship, Mr. Ernest Tan. It now gives me great pleasure to ask Ernest's mother, Miss Michelle Lee, to present the Jazz Scholarship to him. I'm delighted to present this Jazz Scholarship 2020 Award to my son, Ernest Tan. I'd like to extend my sincere gratitude to the board members and to the donors of Jazz for allowing me to pursue my studies in Jazz Performance at the South College of the Arts. I'd also like to thank my friends and my family for all the love and the support, especially my mom. Thank you. Wow, that was a sweet moment. Congratulations again, Ernest, and all the best in your music studies and career. All of us at Jazz are glad that we can continue our role to nurture young, talented jazz musicians throughout this challenging period through the scholarship. Thank you to all our generous donors and supporters who have made this possible. All our past and current jazz scholars, Rich Shi, John Cole, Don Wong and Brian De Rosario will be performing today as well. Speaking of supporters, I would like to share how Jazz Association Singapore came about. Almost four years ago, I had a chat with three jazz lovers and great supporters of jazz about starting an organization to help uplift the jazz scene in Singapore. These three jazz lovers who co-founded jazz are Mr. Albert Chu, Dr. Edmund Lam and Mrs. Susan Pei. Thank you, dear Albert, Edmund and Susan, and thank you to Professor Tommy Cole 
for coming on to be our patron. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Jazz is now very blessed to have Mr. Abdullah Tamuji, Ms. Karen Chan, Mrs. Sandra Chen, and Ms. Sally Liu on our board as well. Thank you, Mr. Abdullah. Sorry. I lost my, my bearings here. Mr. Abdullah, Karen, Sandra, and Sally, thank you very much to all of you. Hope you're all enjoying the show. Now, here's a greeting from Albert Chu, our honorary chairman. Dear friends, International Jazz Day celebrates jazz and its diplomatic role of uniting people from all around the world. With the COVID-19 pandemic, we need to stay connected and encourage each other more than ever. I'm delighted that the Jazz Association of Singapore has staged today's online show. We can now all enjoy the joy of jazz together, whether we are based in Singapore or in another country. For our global friends tuning in, I hope you enjoy Singapore Jazz. I also want to express my thanks to all the musicians and partners, especially the National Arts Council of Singapore, who has made this show possible. And a special call out to the hardworking team at the Jazz Association. Happy International Jazz Day, and please enjoy the show. Thank you, Albert. Really happy to see so many friends messaging on all our pages and enjoying the show. And it's a nice mix of uh, music and some uh, people sharing their thoughts and their love for jazz. And we have spe uh, prepared actually after this a special jam session online with our musician associates who will be performing a swinging version of the well-loved Singapore folk song, Singapura. We would like to dedicate the performance of this song and indeed our whole show to our brave and hardworking medical professionals and healthcare workers, as well as all the essential workers and volunteers who have continued to keep Singapore going during this time, including our postal workers, cleaners, food and beverage and supermarket workers, as well as workers in the hospitality, delivery and public transportation service, among many others on the front line. Here's Singapura by Van Moring, featuring LMA Fernandez, Don Wong, Ravi Trisat Sesakun, Sean Hongwei, Bridie Rosario, Rich Shi, Joe Lee, Christy Smith, Tamago, as well as Wei Xiang Tan and myself. Enjoy! Singapura Singapore, sunny island set in the sea. Singapore, oh, pretty flowers bloom for you and me.
Wow, that was really fun to do. I hope you all enjoyed it. Now we will play a tribute video by SG United to our frontline workers. Amidst the COVID-19 outbreak, our frontline heroes have been working tirelessly to keep Singapore safe. Over the months, Singaporeans have shown their support with words of encouragement. Thank you to all the frontline superheroes to keep us safe in Singapore. We're so grateful for everything you're doing to keep this country safe. As part of SG United, companies and communities have also rallied together to show appreciation to our frontline heroes for their selflessness and dedication in the fight against COVID-19. To all our frontline heroes, you are the glue that keeps us together. Thank you very much for saving lives. Big, Big thank, thank you. you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Find out how you can show care and support for fellow Singaporeans by visiting sgunited.gov.sg. Together, we can overcome. We all, all of us in Singapore, owe an immense debt of gratitude to all these heroes Thank you from all of us at Jazz and all of us in Singapore. So, a lot of people have been asking you for, for music, but, uh, you know, we, we, we want to balance it out with some thoughts and reflections by our musician members and also our supporters. So I hope that those of you who are clamoring for music on the comments, don't worry, lots of music on the show. I would now like to introduce our Associate Music Director, Mr. Wei Xiang Tan, who's also one of the most talented jazz pianists in the region, to share his We are kind of enjoying ourselves. Anyways, um, I'm hoping that uh, everybody stays safe out there and would like to play a song for you. This is called We'll Be Together Again.
thank you, Wei Xiang, for that lovely playing. And also, I really love your grand piano that you have there at home. And now a word from another co-founder, the chairman of the Board of Jazz Association Singapore, Dr. Edmund Lam. Dear friends of Jazz Association, even in troubled times, our mission doesn't change. Through music, we offer solace and respite from each day's challenges. While we cannot offer live performances at this time, we are working very hard to stay connected with our community by sharing online our passion and music with people in Singapore and beyond. At this unprecedented moment in history, the commitment and support of all of you, our generous donors, sponsors, supporters, and jazz fans, has never been more important. Undoubtedly, our nation will rebound. Jazz Association too will rebound successfully to once again provide unforgettable live jazz music memories. With deepest gratitude, stay home, stay safe. Thank you, Chairman. I see that many people are watching uh, uh, Minister Graceful, thank you for watching our show. And also thank you, Joanna Dong, for watching our show. And uh, those of you who after, when we finish our show, Joanna Dong will be doing her International Jazz Day broadcast as well. So please go to her page and catch her, her uh, performance. And also we see Melissa Tan is watching all the way from New York. Hi, Melissa. We will now present an informative panel discussion titled Demystifying the Art of Jazz Composition, which gives music lovers and musicians an insight into the process of jazz composition. The panel is moderated by Wei Xiang Tan, who along with me will be discussing the topic with our panelists, jazz musicians, Kurong Chok and Aya Sikini. Please stay with us for an exclusive performance by Randy Brecker after the panel discussion and many, many, many more high points in our show. Thank you, Jeremy. My name is Wei Xiang and I'm the moderator of this discussion panel entitled Demystifying the Art of Jazz Composition. Jazz to the general public is slightly mysterious. It requires a fair bit of prior knowledge to understand the intricacies of the music. This is made even more mystical when we talk about the process of composing a jazz piece. So to help everyone understand the process a little better, as well as shed light on how uh, actual practicing jazz musicians compose, we've assembled this panel. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce the following panelists. First of all, Chok Karong. Hello, Karong. Hello, hey, Karong. Hi. Hi. Yeah, Karong is, uh, has established himself as one of uh, Singapore's most versatile talents, traversing the numerous genres under the umbrella of popular music with equal aplomb. He has distinguished himself as a swinging, harmonically inventive pianist and organist, and is also emerging as a composer of extraordinary clarity and depth. All right, our next panelist is Aya Saki. Hello, Aya. Hi, Aya. <laughs> yeah, so uh, for the past two decades, Aya has been integral to the scene as an educator and a strong advocate for jazz and the community. She's the th director of a company, Bongo Music, which offers concert, workshop programming and productions and non-profit We Love Jazz Limited, which aims to strengthen the foundation of jazz and improvised music community of Singapore. And lastly, we have Jazz Luminary and Music Director of Jazz Association of Singapore, Professor Jeremy Montero. Hello, Jeremy. Hi. <laughs> right, so Jeremy will be co-moderating along with me. Okay, so now uh, we can get a start, uh, we can get a discussion started proper. So uh, I think the uh, starting point would be how does an aspiring jazz composer start composing? Um, do we, can we all agree on a like, couple of prerequisites, like what, we, what uh, 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 an aspiring jazz composer needs to be able to start composing? Who should go first? It doesn't matter, I guess. Anyone. <laughs> go ahead. I started first, so I guess um, <laughs> I think the first thing would be a good ear. Good ear helps us 
um, go the right way. Right. So uh, we are presupposing like a uh, working knowledge of uh, say basic jazz theory, harmony and technical skills and so on and so forth. Uh, I, I guess that's things. important. Sorry. I, I guess it, that's very important, but we also know a lot of great jazz musicians who she can't read and write, right? So, but then they just, they, can, they just hear it, they sit at the piano, they can play. So I think to be able to, to hear it, the composition in your head, I mean, the melody and then the, the uh, accompanying harmony, of course, it really helps you to have the, uh, some theory background. But I, I think, I think some, uh, the main thing is to just be able to hear it in your head, in my opinion. Right. So it uh, seems that we have like uh, already at this point, a few different starting points. So I'd like to hear from the panel, like uh, what, are your, uh, uh, what are your individual procedures, uh, workflows that you uh, 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 believe in? How about you, Aya? Okay, so for me, I mean, I agree with both of them as well, but for me is a lot of times um, creating a story. My compositions are either already has a story to tell or I make the story according to, to whatever the, the, the material I have. So this is for me to, to explain the song with the music. But then at the same time, I'd like to give the experience to the audience. So I, there's a lot of explanation to my compositions. And my harmony comes from the vibe of the story. I like horror movies, so I would come up with something like, you know, a little spiffy stuff, and then my chords will be altered by the, the whole story, actually. So I'm very storytelling kind of composer. Right. So uh, talking about storytelling, uh, you know, let's say if an uh, aspiring jazz composer has this thing in his or her head and wants to be able to uh, translate it into some kind of like communicable form to other uh, musicians, just like, you know, we know uh, musicians who do only writing by a manuscript. We know uh, composers who uh, basically just like record live and that's like the the uh, uh, um, forum, you know, for for uh, composition. So uh, does anybody in the panel uh, uh, subscribe to other ways of uh, composition? How about you, Jeremy? Jeremy? Well, for me, I guess I got two main ways of approaching composition. One is uh, uh, when I when the song almost like comes to me um, just naturally. I remember like my song Brothers. I was driving home after a gig to Yishun where I was living at the time, and I heard the entire song being performed by the band as though my radio was on, but my radio was not on. So when I get back home, I quickly have to rush to the piano and a recorder. If not, I'll forget. And I'll just play the tune. And then at least I have it on record. I think for me, um, most of my recent compositions as well as has been using a, a mobile phone, a recording function of a mobile phone and just quickly strip. I stopped writing large ensemble in, 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 in about nearly 30, 20 years ago already. So I, I, I don't approach it anymore like an arranger. Then of course, I sometimes people commissioned me to do work. I mean, previously when in my life in jingles, but but also now people say, can you write a, a piece of music for this particular documentary? And then therefore, then I, then I it, really I'm using my head at that point rather than my heart. And then there's some compositions that come into my heart first, and then I use my head to, to manifest it and write a good, a, a good lead sheet or whatever it is. Okay, great. Uh, so, you know, um, I, I think uh, all of us has, uh, gone through a whole journey of, uh, of, of uh, learning how to compose and getting better at uh, the practice of composition. So I'd like to ask you a, an interesting question, uh, which is like, uh, can you remember like uh, some of your earlier compositions, right? And then uh, uh, think about uh, also like uh, what you learn from the initial compositions as well as some mistakes that you made. <laughs> Uh, how, how about you, Karong? Go for this one. Yeah, go for it. Um, I think, well, I'm going to talk about an arranging, an arranging incident first. This is not strictly composition, <laughs> but I think they overlap. <laughs> uh, but this is one of the things that made me learn fast. So it was, uh, a, we had the chance to write our arrangements for string quartet. So I think in, in class, so I brought in a, 
my attempt at arranging, I think it was Lush Life. And I tried, I, I put in Pizzicato with no tempo, just assuming that everything would fall into place. It fell all in the wrong places, right? So that's one of the, my, one of the biggest lessons I learned, you know, just from a practical perspective, like how to increase your chances of success the first time round. Uh, that's one of the things, right? So every time I, every time I write something and get it read, I always take notes. Like, oh, what are the first things that, that, that? What are the things that put the brakes on the process? Because there's no time. Usually, usually we're always short on time. Mm-hmm. Short of time. So that's one of the uh, one of the major um, mistakes that I made when I was early, and I'm glad it was early, early before I even started writing for strings um, in a professional setting. That's a very interesting story, Karong. Uh, yeah. How about you, Aya? About the composition, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, some, some like early composition horror stories. <laughs> um, I think I wrote a quite complicated piece, you know, and it just did not come out how, <laughs> you know, it just became just complicated. You know, it didn't have any... This is when I didn't have any story, you know. This was just like written with a sort of fingertip. You know, it's, it's more like soloing, but like you put that in a composition style, you know. And it just, just it was boring you know, for me. So, yeah, it wasn't really a big boo-boo, but, you know, I just like, oh, I, I spent so much time writing this line and I, writing this line and this sequence, and like it just didn't make me feel excited or People didn't get it, you know, the band didn't get it. I was like, okay, that's it. <laughs> I'll do that one. Yeah. <laughs> so it seems to me that like uh, um, the unifying track between uh, your stories is like uh, always try to aim for, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, some kind of common simplicity, you know, uh, not to uh, uh, be overly ambitious about things uh, until you have a uh, 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 handle on on how to approach it. No, I, have a, I have a horror story I must share. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be 60 years old this year, so I got plenty of horror stories. Uh, so I remember I wrote my first tune, a very simple jazz tune. I, I mean, my first pop tune I wrote in 1977, which ended up being recorded by Tracy Huang. But my first pop tune I ever wrote was in 1985. It was just a simple blues, kind of like in the same groove as Bags Groove. And I call it Bistro Blues for the jazz club that existed at the time. And, and when I released it on my first album, when my album went out of print, I was going, oh, thank goodness, this song will never be exposed again. No, no one will ever hear it. And, you know, it's going to be buried with history, right? Then, like, last month, I get a royalty statement from Universal. And I see that I earned a few dollars from Holland oh, and the UK. Someone used it in a, some documentary. And I'm like, oh, no, it's, it's resurrected again. So, so then I decided I'm going to go and tidy it up with my current sensibilities. And then the next time I play, it will sound a little bit more like Banks Grove rather than the horrible thing I wrote in 1985. <laughs> I'm waiting to hear it, man, when it's uh, all yeah. reworked. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think, uh, you know, that's, a, that's actually a, quite a good lesson. Um, I don't think like compositions or any works are ever set in stone. You know, uh, one can always go back and revise and, uh, you know, uh, redo parts of the song as you see fit. I'm, I mean, after all, it is a composition. It is your work. You know, you should be free to do whatever you want with it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So um, now, uh, leading on to the next question. So how does uh, uh, an aspiring jazz composer get better at the other composition? Like, do you have uh, some advice or tips? Karong, do you have some? Uh, well, I think everyone has heard this one before, but you just got to do it while always being honest with yourself as to whether it's successful or not. And then some of the questions that might follow would be, well, how do I know what is successful? And then that's something that we have to define honestly for ourselves. So it's a process of listening to more and more music, deciding what you like, deciding what you don't like, even if everyone around you likes it. I mean, that's really important um, because with no filter, there'll be no shape to your aesthetic. So I think that, that honesty really helps you decide, okay, what does this make me feel? Or does it make me feel like, does it make me feel nothing? If it makes me feel nothing, I'm going to discard it. Um, 
And then when it comes to the the technical bits, which is oh this voicing, that voicing, this rhythm, still always trying to figure out what it means to you, whatever you play or whatever you're exploring. So because um, when you create that emotional connection with the theoretical things or technical things that you're learning, the tools have meaning and you can put the story together. And then the narrative is easier to, to piece together because you have the tools. But when we learn them as just technical bits of information, then it's very hard to make sense of it uh, apart from whatever it's called in the textbook. Right, right. That is a very, very good advice. I think, uh, you know, uh, we have at our disposal many, many tools. Uh, and, you know, it is uh, the rule of aesthetic, like to be able to uh, employ them to maximum uh, uh, effect as what to do, want to achieve. Yeah. How about, uh, how about Aya? So for me, I think the good advice, it might not work for certain compositions, but for me, I need to be able to hum it. So the one of, I mean, many of my hit songs or whatever that I think that is playable and people remember the melody of my tunes, they're, they kind of sing my songs, you know, and I don't even have lyrics. So it's like something that I can hum. The, the, the episode that I was sharing earlier, I couldn't sing, you know, I couldn't even remember how to play them. So it's something that for me, maybe try to create a melody and then make it as crazy as you want with a chord progression, which brings what Karen was saying, you know, like, what, what are you hearing? Like, and then be honest, but then you can maybe explore more with the harmony. So for my way is I create a melody that comes to me usually like Jeremy, and then I will figure out what kind of chords I'm hearing. And it comes out pretty modern because I listen to a lot of different music. So I kind of trust myself with uh, how cool it may come out. But I, I like to stick to a pretty simple melody and see if I can make it something a little different from what people may hear, you know, yeah. something like that. Well, you know, if I, if I can just uh, say something, um, I, I think the thing is when you, maybe to when we are writing the melody that we maybe don't, I feel that we shouldn't think too much. The, the ties of a saying, don't think too much. And I <laughs> let the melody come really like, yeah. as a, like, like a inspiration. And then when we sit down to craft either the arrangement or the, the lead sheet or the harmonies, then I think we engage on a cerebral level and uh, that's the way I look at it. But before uh, I hand over back to you, uh, Wei Xiang, I just want to say that you know, being in the scene for 44 years, I, 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 it's amazing to see the level of composition that all of you uh, bring to the table of, in the Singapore scene. For example, Wei Xiang, you know, uh, I think not very long started to write big band charts and like he went from zero to 100, in my opinion, especially with that great composition of yours, uh, Sound of on and Aya, you know, you're, I, I've seen stuff that you've done on, online at Blue Jazz and also with the band of Blue Jazz. And I think that your, your compositions bring so much joy and such an important voice in our Singapore scene as a music, as a player, as well as a composer. And Karong, I think that, you know, to me, the, your, 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 your composition uh, that you wrote in tribute to uh, Miles Davis um, uh, that we, we, we commissioned you to do is, is really, um, is really one of the most amazing works I've heard anywhere. So, you know, I think we, are, we can be very proud of, of, of what all of you are doing and just so happy to be in your, in your company. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank, Thank you. you, Jeremy. <laughs> Thank you for those very, very kind words. Well, we have uh, come to the end of the discussion. I hope uh, everyone tuning in has found this to be interesting in some way and feel inspired to reach out to us via Jazz Association social media channels. I believe we will be very happy to answer your questions stemming from this discussion. So thank you very much, Aya, Karong, and Jeremy. Goodbye. Thank you, Isian. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you, Isian, Aya, and Karong for the insightful discussion on jazz composition. Now I'd like to bring you a special greeting from seven-time Grammy Award winner, Randy Brecker, with his wife and great saxophone player, Ada Ruvati, and daughter Stella. Can you imagine seven Grammys? That's the same number of Grammys the Beatles won. Randy will also play for us a beautiful rendition of the classic jazz ballad, I Can't Get Started. Enjoy.
Hi, Hi it's, it's the, the Brecker family. family. Randy, Ada, Stella. Hello to all our friends in Singapore. I just want to wish all the jazz fans in Singapore all the best. I hope that you all stay safe and well. Wishing the Jazz Association Singapore all best wishes during this difficult time of COVID-19. And from all of us, wishing, wishing all, all of you a happy, happy International, International Jazz, jazz Day, Day 2020. 2020. Bye. Bye. Wow, wasn't that just beautiful? And it's so nice to see Randy in his cozy music room with all his Grammys. In fact, there's not enough space on his shelves for his Grammys. Randy is very supportive to us and has come to be chief mentor at our Lion City Youth Jazz Festival in the past. Thank you once again, Randy, for the lovely message and the wonderful performance. Jazz Association Singapore is in its fourth year since we started in 2016. And we are very proud of the work that we have been doing. Here's a short video describing our journey so far. Hello, I'm Jeremy Montero, and I'm the Executive Director and Music Director of the Jazz Association Singapore. We were formed in September 2016 and received our charity status five months later in February 2017. We had three main goals when we first started out. Firstly, with the guidance and support of our patron, Professor Tommy Cole, and our chairman, Mr. Albert Chu, and our board of directors, my team and I have made some good strides in our mission of helping to raise the level of jazz excellence and appreciation in Singapore. We formed the Jazz Association Singapore Orchestra, JASO, and its youth arm, the Jazz Association Singapore Youth Orchestra, or JAZYO, and both orchestras have performed all over Singapore in our efforts to build bigger audiences for jazz in Singapore. We also conducted public education jazz appreciation talks where we spoke about the history of jazz and performed examples from various points in the evolution of jazz. <laughs> In addition, we also started a series of talks for musicians entitled Jazz Improvisation for Classical Musicians. Secondly, we increased our efforts in youth development. Our main youth activity, the Lion City Jazz Festival, saw highly respected international jazz musician mentors, such as Benny Golson and Randy Brecker and other esteemed mentors, work with our youth jazz musicians to increase their skill and to perform together. We also launched our Jazz Scholarship Program in 2018 and awarded a local and international scholarship for deserving students in jazz to study the subject at tertiary level. 
Last year, we awarded the Jazz Scholarship to Don Wong and John Cole. Thirdly, we wanted to play a role in cultural diplomacy by bringing our orchestras to play overseas and show the world that we have a high level of jazz performance in Singapore as well as create attention overseas to our Singapore jazz scene. In our short history, we have already performed at the Jay-Z Shanghai Festival, the Borneo Jazz Festival, the EFG London Jazz Festival, and the Jazz Education Network Conference in Reno, Nevada, where we were presented with an outstanding performance award. Fourthly, besides the original three pillars of our mission I mentioned earlier, we grew a very important fourth pillar that of inclusivity and working with the underserved in Singapore. We find our collaboration with the Jazz Association Singapore a very good fit and especially meaningful for our students. Having the musicians from Jazz, pianist Wei Xiang Tan, Ban Po and singer Don Wong work with our students such as BSA pianist in training Joshua German and our poets in training Isaac Lin, Lian Eng and Serin Sun brought the worlds of jazz, theatre and poetry together. These activities have helped to increase the confidence of our students and given them invaluable exposure in public performance. We find much joy and satisfaction in bringing jazz to as many people as we can in Singapore and are very excited about bringing Singapore jazz to the world. We can only do this with your kind support, the support of generous donors, supporters, well-wishers and the encouragement of the members of our audience who attend our shows and our talks. We look forward to your continued support of the Jazz Association Singapore as we all work together towards making Singapore a leading global city of jazz. Not everyone is aware, but the Jazz Association Singapore is a charity. We are very reliant on donations to sustain our programs, which include continuing our community outreach performances to bring the joy of jazz to all during this trying period and beyond. Funding jazz scholarships to nurture our young talents and supporting our local talents. Please consider supporting us by making a donation if you can to help us continue our work. Your donation will qualify for a 250% tax deduction benefit if you're a Singapore tax resident. On behalf of Jazz, our utmost gratitude for your support. We now bring you a solo performance by a key member of our orchestra who has also played the role of senior youth leader and Jazz 2019 overseas scholar, flutist and composer, Rick Shi who's currently studying towards a master's degree in jazz studies at Queens College, City University of New York. He was the winner of the USA National Flute Association Jazz Artist Competition in 2014, making him the first Singaporean to win such a composition. Such comp Hi everyone, my name is Rit and I play the flute. I'm currently just um, spending most of my time practicing, um, working on fundamentals, such as uh, scales and long tones and also uh, learning more tunes. I remember being in New York and going to lots of jam sessions and uh, people would always call this tune Voyage uh, by Kenny Barron. So um, today I would like to play you a couple of choruses on this tune called Voyage. <laughs>
Wow, that was really a great performance by Richie. You know, Richie is like the poster boy for orchestras, you know. Whenever I uh, have him on any of our shows and we put a video up, right, people will be commenting and saying, wow, so handsome and so cute. I love his dimples. Unlike me, you know, all my dimples, all my dimples have turned to pimples already. So, Rit, thanks so much and all the best. Now, I'm delighted to introduce another jazz co-founder, Mrs. Susan Tay. Susan is our board vice chairman and she also chairs our gala and fundraising committee. Dear jazz friends, jazz is way beyond music. It is a way of life that builds human bridges and makes diversity and adversity. To celebrate International Jazz Day and beyond, the Jazz Association Singapore will continue to bring you engaging online programs via live streams and from the treasure trove of video recordings that provide meaningful conversations in the intimate settings of your own homes, wherever you are across the globe. Please join me to wish Jazz all the best for their digital concerts, specially curated for you by Maestro Jeremy Monterio and his team. On behalf of Jazz, a big heartfelt thank you for all your amazing support for Jazz through the years. Happy International Jazz Day and please enjoy. Take care and stay well. Thank you, Susan. What a lovely message. I also want to say a big word of thanks to our fundraising committee led by Susan. Thank you, Cho Pei Lin, Robert Joyner, Sean Wu, Lucas Yang, Shell and Spencer, even Mirogasu, and our jazz ambassador, Jam Azak. Next up is a solo by a 2018 overseas scholar, John Cole, who is now studying at Berkeley College of Music towards an honors degree in jazz studies. Hi everyone, my name is John Cole. I'd like to thank the Jazz Association and friends and family who have been supporting my musical journey. Uh, it's been a wonderful few weeks uh, being back home, spending time uh, with my family, and also being able to spend time on the fundamentals of my instrument uh, and uh, using this time also to listen to music, much more music than I could uh, back at school. So uh, all the best everyone and uh, take care, use this time wisely and uh, hope to see everybody once all of this is cleared up. Wow, that was great, John. 
No, John is a very focused musician. He's, he's one of the young musicians who average six, seven, eight hours of practice a day. And it's so interesting that John's dad, Adrian, is actually the godson of the Grammy Award winning bass player, L.D. Young, who spent much of 16 years in the 80s through the 90s in Singapore. And many, many people do not know, may not know that some great musicians have, called, have chosen to call Singapore home. For example, the legendary bass player, Victor Gaskin, who played with Cannonball Adderley, and many other great musicians also lived in Singapore. And the great guitar player, uh, O'Donnell Levy, who played with all the great organ players of the world. And O'Donnell Levy used to say to his audience when he played, I hope that you'll, this music will make you feel as though you're intertwined in a mere, in a, in a millennium of sheer ecstatic jubilation. So that's jazz for you. Thank you, John. Recently, I had the opportunity to chat with two proprietors of Singapore's leading jazz club venues, Eileen Tan of Blue Jazz Cafe and Peter Ng of Maduro. Here's some interview session with Eileen and Peter. Hello to both of you, Eileen Tan and Peter Ng. Eileen Tan, the proprietor of Blue Jazz Cafe, and Peter Ng, the proprietor of Maduro Jazz Club here in Singapore. Thanks for joining us on our International Jazz Day chat. Thanks, Jeremy, for inviting us. No, it's a pleasure, really a pleasure to have both of you. So, can I just ask, uh, you know, what are uh, each of you doing in your respective free time uh, now, <laughs> with being forced to stay home for most of the time during the circuit breaker? Or what? How do you fill up your time during the day, Eileen? For me, uh, last last week I was doing what I was not supposed to be doing. I was like. Every uh, alternate day, I was going out with my husband and my daughter together to the supermarket as a way of hanging out <laughs> outside. <I see>. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah, and, now, and now the government said, no, you cannot go out as a family. So, yeah, <laughs> like the rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and I was cooking at home and uh, also spending a lot of time negotiating with landlords because uh, the rent uh, is one of, of the biggest commitment. And then, uh, you know, business is not going back to usual, even after the lockdown period. So I have to really sit down with the landlord and tell them that we will have financial difficulty, you know, paying right. rent. Right. And, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, you are successful in getting some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of help or concession from them. Yes. Uh, so far, a few of them has given me like two months waiver. So oh, I do not know what is the next step um, going forward because I think even after lockdown period, there will be still be safe distancing measures which will make uh, running of the business very difficult yeah. for us. Yeah, it's very nice that you use the proper term lockdown. Uh, it's a, our, our very <laughs> fancy circuit breaker. <laughs> uh, how about you, Peter? What have you been doing? Uh, how Spending your time uh, staying at home? I'm, I'm sure... You know, as a very good pianist, one of the best pianists uh, Singapore has ever seen in terms of the, uh, the your particular style of music. I mean, I'm sure you have a lot of time to to play the piano as well. What what have you been doing? Yeah, in fact, I've been practicing a lot of piano, going back to all the classical pieces and uh, uh, just going through learning new ones and also yeah, just basically practice. I've been such a joy that for musicians we have. We are quite blessed because we can indulge, indulge in music by ourselves. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, I just want to say that, you know, uh, both of you play such an important part uh, uh, in, in, in the jazz scene in Singapore. Uh, you know, the musicians uh, uh, really do uh, appreciate both of your venues. I mean, Eileen, uh, you know, you, you, you have been doing this for a while, but I think uh, one, one thing I know for sure is that the the young musicians, uh, have, that's almost, this is your place is where uh, people have gone to, what as we say in the industry, they go there and cut their teeth, you know, uh, from uh, not being able to <laughs> come well and then be performing in front of an, an audience. So thank you very much. I mean, how, tell me a little bit about uh, what was your, your, your vision and intention when you, when you started uh, Blue Jazz? Okay, we, we started Blue Jazz uh, back in 2005. Um, uh, the, the name Blue Jazz is just a name, it's, it's not meant to be a music band because when we started, 
we were selling burgers and breakfast and also local dishes. So usually by 9 or 10 p.m., the place is emptied out because uh, people leave after dinner. So we wanted to keep people until late. Um, then we decided to start uh, uh, music uh, entertainment in the venue. And then um, a year later, Aya came in and, you know, I, she said, um, I'm Aya Sakini, I want to play here. And she, <laughs> she actually, uh, she brought us into jazz, you know, so to speak. Yes. That's wonderful. Yeah. And, and Peter, of course, uh, you know, starting... Maduro. I mean, I really enjoy playing there as well, you know, because the ambience is different. It's a, it's a small place, but, uh, uh, you know, it really is quite intimate. And uh, please share with us your, your, your vision and, and what you had in mind when you, when you started uh, Maduro. I think it's more, I started more by default than anything. Yeah. As a music bar. Yeah. Uh, so, I, as we go and learn about the... Uh, I think it's, it's a platform, I think, where artists can go there and perform. It's a, a venue where I think audience can gather together, and then with the artists performing. I think so it's such a nice vibe. And then, of course, to keep it a good standard of music and uh, to bring an ambience into the MC, I think it's coming. Yeah. Yeah, it's very important. I mean, you look at the, the jazz capital of the world, uh, New York, right? I mean, they have. So many jazz clubs in Tokyo. Greater Tokyo has about 40 jazz clubs. Uh, and, and Singapore right now, you know, we, we are so lucky just to have the two of you. I mean, to, to, to keep it going. And, you know, uh, I'm sorry that we can't go and play at your venues at this time. And we are looking forward to the time that we can go back and make noise at your places again, you know. <laughs> Blue Jazz is probably one of, the, one of the more accessible places because a lot of time when the musicians or the students come in to play, they don't even have to spend any money because like ice water is free of charge at, at a dispenser. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's clear there's different positioning and I think the positioning works you know, you're diff because you caters for different part of the of the, uh, the jazz fans. I think that's very important. That, and, and so that, you know, both your venues continue to be complementary to each other, you know, even though you're both doing the same distance, I think it's very important that everyone complements. There's always the more trees in the orchard is better. You know what I mean? So it's yes. very good. Yeah, so thank you yeah. for, for being so, uh, you know, so gracious with what you do. Um, you know, right now, International Jazz Day, uh, we were supposed to do a performance uh, of uh, the Jazz Association Singapore Youth Orchestra at Botanic Gardens on the 25th. And then, of course, we, we plan to do a live stream, uh, remember, uh, Peter, <laughs> on the 25th? Yeah. And then uh, the, after the circuit breaker, all that ideas, all the great ideas is gone. So we have gone online to do this live show, uh, which is being watched uh, globally and also uh, being uh, broadcast on uh, Straits Times uh, online platform. So quite a lot of viewership. So, I'm, you know, I think it's very, very nice that both of you come on to, uh, to talk about what your mission and such an integral part of the ecosystem of jazz in Singapore. So tell me, what are you uh, looking forward to after this whole circuit breaker and when COVID has, has gone away? Uh, what are you looking for? Peter, tell, tell me a little bit what you're, you're, you're hoping for at the, at the end of all this. I think we will still continue as who we are, where we are trying to uh, get some of the finest musicians coming to play. I think, yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. I just uh, keep it as that soft venue and uh, platform for everyone to enjoy yourself. Yeah. Well, we look forward very much to it. Eileen, tell us a little bit what, what you're hoping for, for the future. Um, I think we all need to be positive, right? <laughs> We hope that we can still uh, support uh, the, the the music, like because before COVID, we are still doing the, the daily weekday jazz uh, jam, jamming session, and uh, it is designed to have a mix of like student musicians and and um, amateur and professionals, veterans coming together on the same stage, you know, and off stage to share their love for music. So I hope that can continue. Um, but we see how it goes financially, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think the recovery is going to be like six to 12 months, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. Well, on behalf of the Jazz Association of Singapore and uh, on behalf of UNESCO International Jazz Day, uh, thank you very much to both of you for coming on our live stream. 
program and uh, looking forward to seeing both of you in real life very soon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eileen and Peter. All of us musicians just can't wait to go back and play in your clubs after COVID-19 and we can go back to perform for all you wonderful jazz fans in Singapore. And here's one of our Jazz Yo members with her greetings. Uh, trumpeter and composer Michelle Lai, who's now studying composition at Berkeley College of Music. Hi everyone, we're living in very tough circumstances right now, especially for artists and entertainers like us. But the message we are trying to spread right now is one of hope. Hope that everyone can think outside of themselves and stay home and support our essential workers as much as possible. Please stay healthy and let's stop the spread of the virus as soon as possible and start spreading love and music instead. See you! The youngest regular member of our orchestras and lead alto saxophone player, Mr. Sean Hongwei, who just turned 21 last week, will now share his music with you. Hello everybody, my name is Sean and I play with the Jazz Association of Singapore and I hope that everyone's staying at home and staying safe. Um, I've been working on a tune entitled uh, Smile, played by Dexter in Dexter's Dexter Calling album. So please enjoy. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. You know, Sean is another one of the great young musicians who practice six, seven, eight hours a day. So I asked him one time, why do you practice seven, eight hours a day? You know, I mean, it's great that you do. He says, well, everyone works eight hours a day, so that's my work. And so that's why I spend seven, eight hours a day. In the past three years since our founding, the Jazz Association Singapore Orchestra, or JASO, has traveled around the world to perform with concerts at the Jay-Z Shanghai Festival, the Borneo Jazz Festival, the Jazz Education Network Conference in Reno, Nevada, as well as the EFJ London Jazz Festival. Bringing Singapore jazz to the world is an important part of our mission. We want to make Singapore a global city of jazz. Here we are playing at the uh, one of my songs, Blues of the Saxophone Club at the EFG London Jazz Festival. And I would like to give a shout out here to the founder and uh, director of the EFG London Jazz Festival, Mr. John Cumming. John is actually in hospital now. Uh, actually, he was in hospital for, for some other treatment and he caught COVID-19. And even though he's sick and in hospital, he still sent a message uh, to us at the Jazz Association to wish us a good show. So John, from all of us at the Jazz Association Singapore and all the jazz fans in Singapore, we wish you a fast and full recovery and look forward to seeing you very soon. So here's Blues for the Saxophone Club, which also was the first tune 
ever played by both our orchestras, Jazz Yo and Jazz Yo.
Wow, that was really fun. And it was so much fun to, to be in London, you know. We played three concerts at the University of West London, uh, where I'm a professor, visiting professor. And we also played at the Millennium Grand Hotel. Uh, the Millennium Grand actually sponsored our hotel stay at the Copton Tara Hotel. Lovely hotel, and we so much, had so much fun there. And what was fantastic was downstairs, there was a Singapore food restaurant. So we had our char kway tiao, our mee siam, our mee goreng, and, uh, and our nasi lemak. So really, we felt so at home while we're in London. We can't wait to go back and play uh, in London and play with all our UK jazz musician uh, brothers and sisters. We really enjoy playing with all of you. Launched by Jazz in 2017, the Lion City Youth Jazz Festival is one of our main pillars of youth development. It is a youth-focused learning and immersion program comprising six days of intensive rehearsals and workshops under the mentorship of international jazz legends and leading jazz musicians. This culminates in a grand finale concert where the esteemed mentors play with our youth musicians of Jazz Yo. During our past, among our past mentors is the legendary Benny Golson. Some of you may rem remember him from the famous photograph, The Great Day in Harlem. Our chief mentor, Randy Brecker, who you saw just now in the video. Antonio Hart, who's a professor at uh, Queen's College, where Richie is studying. Carmen Bradford, who uh, was the singer with Count Basie, uh, when Count Basie was still alive. And Fritz K. Rennell, who's the director of the Jazz Art Festival in Switzerland, and many other wonderful mentors. Here's Sean Hongwei sharing with us his thoughts and also uh, sharing his experience as a youth participant of the Lion City Youth Jazz Festival in 2017 when he was just 18 years old. I never thought that at the age of 18 I would be given the opportunity to play, rehearse and perform with some of the best jazz musicians in Singapore and also from around the world, including one of the greatest jazz legends, Benny Golson. Just by being around them, I felt like it really inspired me to become a better musician and a better human being. Thank you. Now, let's relive a performance of Lion City by Jazz Yo at the Lion City Youth Jazz Festival 2018 finale concert.
Hamilton, Mr. Lewis Nash, Aaron James Lee, Yap Ting Wei. Just now I forgot to introduce our base mentor, you're sitting quietly in the back, Jay Anderson. Come on, Jay, come. Jay Anderson, ladies and gentlemen. How about that? Wow, that was a rousing performance and it's so inspiring to watch our young musicians play with so much gusto. You know, the drum mentor, Louis Nash, is the most recorded drummer in jazz history. And he was so good the way he coached our look, our young musicians. And I think that Aaron James Lee and Yap Ting Wei held their own really well and in playing with the master and all the musicians, in fact. Thank you, everyone, for watching our show. And do look out for other future online performances and talks. We are going to make do our best. We're here for you and we want to create interesting online content for you so that you can continue to enjoy jazz. And I hope that you will continue to comment and feedback to us so that we can do make content that will make you happy and also to inspire you. Really appreciate what you watching the show. Please follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we'd love to hear from you. We have now come to the end of our show. On behalf of all of us at the Jazz Association Singapore, our broadcast partner, The Straits Times, and the National Arts Council, thank you for watching. You know, I was monitoring the different channels that we were doing at the Jazz Association Facebook, my Facebook, also The Straits Times, and I can say that I'm so happy that at all times between 900 and 1600 of you all are watching. I don't know how many else were watching on the other uh, parties, uh, watch parties and so on, but from the bottom of my heart and from all of us, the Jazz Association, thank you so much for supporting us and for watching. Please stay home, stay safe, and happy International Jazz Day.